thingy floating in the air. But if you're going to do some kind of higher education, I think creating in 3D is stretching the brain somehow in a, in a good way. So a 3D app would make sense for that, but you also have to be able to create there. You can't just tour, I feel, this exposition and say, wow, now I feel smarter. I think you have to actually build something. Now in the classes you and I have been giving talks to as guest speakers, they are actually required to build things. So is there something fundamentally different about them having to build in 3D that somehow relates to higher education and higher education purposes that can't be done as effectively, except maybe, you know, in a studio in real life in a sculpting? Yes, I, and I think um, the way that I can relate to what you just said is, um, as a librarian, books and reading has always been an important part of my field. And I found that reading and writing are connected, just like breathing. You both breathe in, you inhale, and you exhale. Now, would if, if you were gonna teach breathing, would you do one semester where all you do is breathe in and then wait till next semester to exhale? No, you would die, you know? We both intake and we ex exhale, we in inhale, exhale. Same thing with reading and writing. You don't just read, 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 read forever. You also need to learn how to express. We listen, we speak, we read, we write. We go in, in a virtual world to these places, but we too can build. And that's why I love the idea of symbol. I would like to start by giving you a little context about the event. My name is a cup of tea here in Second Life, Jem O'Connor in the natural world. I have been teaching a class for Technological University Dublin in Ireland here in Second Life for over 14 years. About three years ago, I met Professor Murat Gulmez of Chai University in Mersin, Turkey, who has also been teaching for many years here in Second Life as Magua Teriak. We both knew Lisena Wisdom Seeker and Whole Brain Health, and the three of us decided to join forces to try and create an immersive student experience in Second Life, which became this Virtual Worlds International Student Project. The students you will meet here today join Second Life for the first time between February and March. They have been introduced to the practicalities of life in the metaverse by Tuya Hines and the Whole Brain Health team. In addition, they have received tuition on collaboration and teamwork from Saitan Madonna and attended a series of talks and site visits with Val Librarian Greg at the Community Virtual Library and Gentle Heron at Virtual Ability Island. The earthquake in Turkey earlier this year delayed the arrival of students and staff from Chaya University. So we want to pay particular credit to their dedication this semester. Today we are here to see the students present one of the main projects on which they will be assessed. It is a team project and this semester is titled No One is Too Small to Make a Difference after one of Greta Thunberg's public talks. In essence, the students have been divided into four teams with a mix of Turkish and Irish participants on each. They were asked to consider the UN Sustainability Goals and consider one action they could take in their own communities to affect change and then present the anticipated outcome here in Second Life. <coughs> So the format is as follows. I will lead you to each team's presentation site in order. Green, blue, gold, red. Once everyone has gathered, 
I will give a countdown to the team leader who will introduce their team members, each of whom has two minutes or so to speak. The team will give us a tour of their build and explain how it supports their ideas. They have been asked to support their presentations with subtitles, so please refrain from using local chat while the teams are presenting so as not to confuse those subtitles. Please keep your mics muted also. This is to avoid distractions from the presentations and to keep the sound as clear as possible for the recording. Once the team has concluded, the team leader will let me know. That way we will know when to move on to the next presentation. When we have heard from all four teams, we will return here for a closing session that will include the opportunity to ask questions if you have any. So, let's get started. Please follow me to the green area. I'm Verify. I'm the leader of the green team and the members of the green team are Ali, Anita, our Aero, Joel, Mart, Muzo and Rebecca. Our topic for the, today is reducing the carbon footprint for a sustainable future. As the world continues to face climate change challenges, it is increasingly important to adapt sustainable efforts that minimize the carbon footprint and preserve our natural resources. Today, our presentation topic is about what we as individuals can do to re reduce our impact and carbon footprint in the world. Now, sorry. now let me show you how our construction supports our idea. You can see some solar panels here. and the water mill and wind tur turbines. In addition, we have also a bike and, a, and an electrical car commu for commuting the, em the emissions. Moreover, you can see that we have a little farm where we have a greenhouse and a minimal area for producing our own meat, fruits, and vegetables. In addition, we have a recycle bin area to compost a bin to separate our trash correctly and transform our organic waste into fertilizer to be used in the garden. Also, we added plenty of open air sitting areas where, where we can use abundant natural light and avoid expanding electricity when it is unnecessary. Thank you. Now I'm giving the word to Joe. Um, so today I'm going to talk about greenhouses and water mills. Um, greenhouses are generally seen as eco-friendly, but they can be further improved to increase efficiency. It is an efficient way of growing vegetables and fruit in small spaces while preserving ecosystems and wildlife as they keep surrounding areas undisturbed. Comparing this to regular farming, greenhouse gardening is a more sustainable method of food production. Building a more eco-friendly greenhouse can be achieved, for example, by maximizing the sunlight and finding the right placement for the greenhouse. It can be heated through solar panels as well as the energy generated by the water mill during the colder months. Using a sustainable water system like water mill collecting rainwater or implementing drip irrigation will reduce the water uses by up to 70%. These sustainable greenhouse design solutions work on a small and larger basis as they could produce six to 10 times the amount of food as, as it is being farmed on regular fields today. Water mills. 
Another way of implementing sustainability into everyday life is the use of water mills. These generate electricity where the water flow spins the blade of a turbine. This will enable people to generate green energy from streams on the grounds of their houses. On a larger scale, wildlife could be a problem as fish could be harmed by the turbines, which might have an effect on the fish populations. Therefore, further tests are required. I'm going to give the word to Anita now. Yeah, uh, I'm going to be talking about the wind turbines. Uh, so wind turbines are considered a sustainable energy source because they generate, generate electricity by harnessing the power of the wind which is a renewable resource uh, and that will not run out. Uh, there are several factors that contribute to the overall sustainability of the wind turbines. The first one is energy efficiency. Wind turbines generate electricity with no fuel consumption or emissions, making them energy efficient and environmentally friendly option for electricity generation. Um, the second one is renew renewable energy. Wind energy is renewable, meaning that it can be replenished naturally and does not produce greenhouse gases that contribute to climate change. <clears throat> uh, the third one is land use. Wind, sorry. Uh, the third one is land use. Wind turbines require relatively little land compared to other en energy sources such as coal or natural gas power plants, making them a more uh, sustainable option for energy production. The fourth one is low environmental impact. Wind turbines have a low environmental impact compared to other energy sources such as oil or gas and do not produce toxic emissions or pollutants that harm the environment. And finally, uh, recyclability. Wind turbines are designed to be recyclable, with the majority of materials used in the construction being able to be recycled or reused at the end of their life cycle. And now I'll give the word to Anna. So, thank you. I'm going to talk about uh, recycling. So, uh, recycling is a very important attitude towards a cleaner and sustainable future. Uh, recycling is important because without it, we would have to produce a lot of, um, a whole lot more of new materials to meet our needs. Um, the extraction and processing of raw materials that go into making the products we buy today is a very energy energy intensive process that causes a lot of pollution and disrupts uh, environmental sustainability. If plastics, paper, and other materials were not recycled, we would have to find another source of raw materials such as trees that could be used to make paper and other products. So by reusing aluminum, paper, glass, plastics, and other materials, we can save production and energy costs and reduce the negative impacts that the extraction and processing of virgin materials has on the environment. Moreover, things like cardboard can also be recycled for cash, then creating job opportunities. Also, the more we recycle, the less garbage winds up in our landfills and incineration plants. And landfills are the biggest source of methane and, and greenhouse gas that contributes to climate change. By recycling uh, these materials, we can greatly reduce the impact on the environment and have a cleaner, healthier and more sustainable human activities on our planet. So, um, as we can see near our house, we added uh, some uh, recycling uh, garbage bins and um, compost bins to our construction. We have here six bins and each color means a type of material to be recycled. So uh, blue means paper, green means glass, red for plastic, yellow for metals, purple is for e-waste and gray for organic waste that cannot be put 
in the compost bin, for example, are onions and lemons, that is citric materials and cooked meals. So, as I said, by recycling our household waste, we help to conserve resources, save energy, energy protect the environment, and reduce an, uh, land use content. And our compost bin helps to turn our organic waste into fertilizer that can be used in our garden, for example. In other words, recycling uh, lowers air pollution and CO2 emissions, creates a healthy ecosystem and for humans and wildlife, and promotes respect for the environment. Uh, thank you. Now it's, uh, I'll give the word to Iroh. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about the transportation side of things when it comes to carbon footprints. Uh, transportation is one of the major contributors to carbon footprints, especially the cars that we use in our daily life are responsible for uh, a lot of the carbon footprints. Uh, what we have here is an electric car. Research has shown that electric cars are better for the environment. They emit fewer greenhouse gases and air pollutants than a petrol or diesel cars. Uh, we also see Tesla and other electric car companies getting more and more popular, which is good for our environment. Obviously, there are also other ways for reducing carbon footprints if you cannot afford an electric car. <clears throat> Driving less. Reducing the amount of miles you drive is the best way to reduce air pollution from motor vehicles. If you can, try walking or biking to your destination. You will emit zero pollutants for longer distances. Try riding the bus or train. Uh, drive a cleaner vehicle. Uh, drive the most fuel-efficient vehicle that meets your needs. Burning less fuel means emitting less of the harmful byproducts of combustion. There are many hybrid models on the market as well. Uh, I talked about the transportation side of things when it comes to carbon footprints and how we can reduce them. Uh, thank you for listening. Thank you for your time and attention. I hope everything was clear and you liked. Well done, and thank you to the Green Team members. Now, let's go to the Blue Team area, which is just behind us. Hello, my name is Sharon. I am the captain of the Blue Team. Um, so, me, Kansu, Seren, NC, Yula, Daniela, Jess, and Marat, we built an IKEA form for sustainability. IKEA sends furniture to the world with a unique business system with its own special design units and objects and furniture made by famous designers in its field and has completely changed furniture. 60% of IKEA products are made using renewable materials. The IKEA team's goal is for all of its products to be renewable for recyclable by, 2020, by 2030. The steps taken for this all IKEA members are 100% lead free. They have been one of the first companies to manufacture the chemicals and pure materials that do not con contain toxic substances. Ragtar is the name of the blue bag that gives imp uh, uh, importance to green. When you enter the store, you must have used it to put the products you bought. Sort of laundry or moving. This blue bag is both economical and environmentally friendly instead of disposable bags. Uh, hi everyone. Um, as a uh, first step uh, in this process, IKEA, IKEA removed all single use plastics from its products range at the beginning of 2020. You can see that um, they have uh, avoid the use of stores, plastic cups, and plates in uh, IKEA restaurants. 
Bamboo uh, is one of the most environmentally friendly products after wood. Bamboo is stronger and more durable than most wood materials, thanks to its long fibers. At the same time, bamboo is a product that does not uh, lose its, its quality for a long time. So we use bamboo products at uh, home and garden. For example, we build a bomb bamboo swing in the garden. Uh, although the use of uh, linen uh, in, is a thing of the past, IKEA has brought this raw material back to the uh, present. It continues to produce products with durable and beautiful looking linen. Soft and breathable bed linen is produced for a better night's sleep with this natural material, which is grown using less water and pesticide. Hi, everyone. Um, I can use these natural fibers that people consider waste materials, materials such as coconut shell, water hyacinth, and um, seaweed. That less waste is um, generated. Materialable um, products reduce wa waste. Uh, for this reason, many of IKEA's products have begun to switch from batteries to rechargeable systems. Your better consumption is very important for sustainability. That's why IKEA produce uh, weather saving mixers. Kitchen and bedroom uh, tabs help you reduce your weather consumption by up to 50 uh, percent. IKEA requires to know where every wood used in its products comes from. All the wood used in IKEA products is obtained from management certified forests. They are working together with the Worldwide Fund for Nature and the Forest Stewardship Council to achieve this goal. Without a forest management certificate, we never source the wood we use from intact natural forest or other geographically designed forest of high conversation value. In addition, IKEA forestry specialists are involved in the production process, share their knowledge with suppliers and track logs back to the first source they came from. Thank you. Now to turn Daniela. One of the most water consuming products is cotton. IKEA produces cotton, which is used in most of its products in a more sustainable way. Less water, less fertilizer, and less pesticides are con consumed. And not only that, the fabric is woven using 15% less cotton. It is possible to see the same quality from the products. Each year, IKEA uses approximately 0.7% of all cotton grown around the world. While this may seem like a relatively small number, it enables them to contribute to positive and sustainable change in the global cotton industry in terms of both social and environmental impact. IKEA has reduced the use of PVC polyvinyl chloride in its products since the early 90s. I don't use it at all right now. For now, the only exception is power cables. IKEA has launched the Soleta series LEDs in instead of environmentally harmful bulbs. It is more affordable and on average 35% more energy efficient. Lighting accounts for nearly 15% of the global electricity consumption, hence improving the energy efficiency of lighting sources can play a vital role in decreasing energy consumption around the world. Even better, each little bulb corresponds to 20 old incandescent bulbs that last about a year, which means a lot of waste can be saved. Now on to Jess. I'm going to be speaking about how IKEA are launching a campaign to reduce excessive consumption. So according to the news in the BBC, 50% of the coupon price will be given for the products that are no longer being searched for and needs to be taken back under the plan. And these coupons can be spent in stores. The Swedish-based company is preparing to launch its uh, retrieval project at the same time as the next Black Friday month. In the statement made by IKEA, it was noted that the initiative aims to raise awareness 
uh, against excessive consumption. In the initiative, it is, it is to be implemented internationally. The take back values will be determined in the proportion up to the wear of the furniture. There will be 27 countries uh, involved, 50% uh, of the discounted price will be coupons, up to 30% of the products will be a large number of drawings in the project which will be implemented in 27 countries, products that do not have upholstery such as shelves, rooms, chairs, footrests, dining tables should be consumed. Uh, it is stated that everything that will be configured is in such a way that will be not be resold in IKEA will be monitored and recycled. Now I'm passing on. Okay. I want to talk about a little IKEA's uh, histories. The, com the company is preparing to create areas in all its stores where furniture is resolved, used or repaired, where furniture is sold. The company which presented its first collection in 1948 can change hence for I amounts of some nostalgic products. The company is testing in Edinburgh and Glasgow community Brazil initiative Swedish furniture giant IKEA has taken a historic decision and announced that it will remove all single-handed plastic centers from shopping malls and restaurants by 2020. IKEA has announced that it will ban, ban all plastics products its produce produces in all its stores and restaurants by 2020. Accordingly, products such as plastic straws, forks, knives, spoons, garbage, bags and mugs will not be used. IKEA, which improves itself every day in the field of sensibility and reveals a new project almost every week, has collaborated this time with MUD Dijins. A Dutch denim company to launch a special series of climbing sofa covers uh, made of recycled denim to support sensible sensible uh, living the limited edition seat cover covers are made of 40 percent recited denim about two pairs of old jeans are used in each seat cover unlike the industry standard denim method each denim cover used on the seats reduce the carbon a footprint by 67% and saves 27,000 liters of water. With this new transformation movement, the goal is to raise and breathe new life into jeans wheel. Most of them end up in landfills when they are thrown away. By introducing new seat covers made from recycled materials, they help customers to renew their seats and reuse materials and with this simple gesture. They give both sofa, sofas and jeans a new change, said Pete Jakubik, IKEA's distribution leader in new business and innovation distribution. Thank you. IKEA sells furniture to the world with a unique business system, with its own special design unit and objects and furniture made by famous designers in its field. It has completely changed the furniture sector. In addition, consumers create an emotional connection with the product 
while putting their product together. Adopt the product and the brand more decently and strengthen IKEA's brand image in the eyes of consumers. Plain packages, the plain packaging system has no meaning for the consumer. It is important for IKEA because it helps to reduce the cost of the national logistics operations. Finally, we would like to point out that as the Paris Climate Congress approaches, IKEA has announced that it has allocated a budget of $1 billion to, to environmental issues. Of this budget, 600 million euros will be allocated to renewable energy sources such as wind and solar, and 400 million euros will be allocated to the IKEA Foundation to produce renewable energy technologies and climate adaptation solutions. Thank you everyone for your time and attention. Well done, and thank you to the blue team members. Now, let's go to the gold team area. Hello guys, welcome all. Uh, I'm Frank Kimma, leader of the gold team. Uh, we are happy that you are in the gold team area. Now, I would like to introduce you to the members of the gold team. Uh, hello, the assistant leader, Ariana. Mustafa Tao, the only Susu, our communication leader, Tuche and Sisha. Now I would like to talk about the subject of our presentation and some of its key points. Our presentation theme is to make life healthier by using energy cleanly. While choosing this, we considered the factories, cars, and agricultural products around us and thought about how they could use cleaner energy. In the first part, part of our presentation, I will show you the green roof house I have built and I would like to talk to you, talk to you about the benefits of a green roof house in terms of clean energy and sustainability. As you will see when you look at the roof, the roof of the house, a green roof house is a building that has a roof partially or completely covered with vegetation such as grass, flowers or even small trees. This type of roof provides numerous benefits for both the homeowner and the environment. First of all, a green roof helps to reduce energy consumption in the home. The vegetation on the roof acts as insulation, reducing the amount of heat that is transferred to the interior of the house during hot weather and reducing the amount of heat lost during cold weather. This means that less energy is needed to heat or cool the home leading to lower energy bills and a smaller carbon footprint. In addition to energy efficiency, green roofs also provide important environmental benefits. For example, they help to improve air quality by absorbing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and producing oxygen. They also help to reduce stormwater runoff, which can contribute to flooding and water pollution. Instead of running off into the streets, the rainwater is absorbed by the vegetation on the roof and is released back into the atmosphere through evaporation and transpiration. Another benefit of green roof is that they provide habitats for wildlife such as birds and insects. This is especially important in urban areas where green spaces are often limited. Also, the water tank and solar panel on the roof of the house provide hot water to the house with the use of natural and clean energy. I can say that the reason why the windows of the houses are large and white glass is that the sun's heat can easily enter the house, forming and illuminating the house by using clean and natural energy. Overall, a green roof house is a smart choice for anyone looking to reduce their energy bills over their carbon footprint and contribute to the healthier environment. So if you are thinking about building a new home or renovating an existing one, consider incorporating a green roof into your plans. Thank you for listening to me. Now uh, it's Hale's turn. Hi, so I'm going to be talking about the wind turbines and the electric cars. So the wind turbines operate on an easy concept. Rather than using power to create wind like a fan, they create electricity using wind. 
An electric generator spins when a turbine blade are turned by wind. We can solve our energy issues using wind energy because it is sustainable and clean. With no direct release of greenhouse gases, it can be used to generate power in place of fossil fuels. There will always be wind because it's renewable and unrenewable. Our advantages of wind turbines are that there are no carbon emissions produced when electricity is generated from the wind. Wind energy has the potential to reduce carbon emissions by replacing electricity produced from other sources such as fossil fuel power plants. Another one is that wind turbines production as well as energy costs can also be re recovered very quickly. This might occur in just as six to eight months for a large wind turbine on a good site. Another one is that it is an extremely clean energy source that operates without generating any pollutants or creating any waste. Onto the electric cars. An electric car is a vehicle powered by one or more electric motors. It only uses the energy stored in batteries. Compared to an internal combustion energy engine vehicle, electric cars are quieter, have no emissions and have a lower overall emission. Um, studies show that electric cars are better for the environment, they emit less greenhouse gases and air pollutants than gasoline and diesel. And this accounts for production and power generations to keep them running. Um, advantages of electric cars are that they produce a clean environment, no congestion charge, renewable electricity tariffs and they reduce noise pollution. So thank you, and then Jack's going to be speaking next. Uh, I think he is not here, so let's uh, continue with Susu and Tao. Uh, okay. Um, now I want you to the section where we have our organic garden and water well so here um first um my name is suda and we will uh, explain this construction with my friend tao kirkede and um, what we want in this garden we make it to grow the products and we grow with clean uh, energy waste. Organic products play a very important role in our uh, servant time. Um, and almost a lot of vegetables and fruits are not organic anymore. And many problems arise from them. For example, people get sick easily, such as poison, or the cultivated uh, lands um, are damaged and pollute the environment. We have grown with natural animal, uh, animal manure in the construction we have done here and we have a small water well right next to it. Natural water comes from the well for vegetables to grow and these two things I describe it lead to clean us of energy in our universe it offers um, a healthier and cleaner energy life and my friends they will continue to tell the rest Uh, hello everyone, my name is Typhoon. The vegetables grown in the garden that we have made uh, are healthier and taste better. In addition, because it's organic, it reduces epidemic diseases caused by it. Uh, so people live healthy in cleaner universe. So we build our uh, water well to minimize waterborne disease. If the water is dirty, a lot of bad problems can uh, also in me, but in food and directly from the mouth. We have designed a nature water well from this. As a result of this, we have built environmentally friendly organic garden and natural water. Well, for cleaner energy use, reducing environmental 
pollution and healthy life should. Uh, thank you for listening to us. Uh, so, um, one of our friends, I think, didn't show up, so I can talk to you about riding a bike to the Learning a bike for clean energy and environment. So we built a little, not a quite little, but a bike shelter here. And uh, using the bike is a really uh, good for the environment. Uh, first of all, reason. First reason, it's reduce your uh, carbon footprint. Unlike cars, bicycles don't produce any emissions, which means that you are not contributing to air pollution when you ride your bike. And Thirdly, uh, secondly, cycling is a sustainable mode of transportation. It requires no fuel and the production and maintenance of bicycles are much less harmful to the environment than that of cars. And uh, lastly, cycling is a great way to promote a more active and healthy lifestyle. By choosing to ride your bike instead of driving, you are not only helping the environment, but also benefiting your own health. So, uh, in conclusion, even a short two-minute ride on your bicycle can have a positive impact on the environment. So, let's all try to incorporate cycling into our daily routines and do our part in creating a more sustainable future. Thank you. And now, um, thank you for your time and attention. We can move it all of our builds freely. Well done, and thank you to the Gold Team members. Now, let's go to the final presentation in the Red Team area. And please wait at the sign outside the big globe. Hello everyone, I am the leader of the Red Team. With team members including Bianca, Deviki, Seattle, Senos 07, and Berkai Kol. Today I'm going to talk about the sustainability and recycling of the earth. Through the conversation of natural resources, waste reduction, energy conservation, economic opportunities, and environmental education, we can pave the way for a more sustainable future. It is crucial that we all, proact we all take proactive steps to incorporate recycling into our daily lives, make sustainable choices, and advocate for change at a systematic level. For example, beyond picking in praise of implementing a circular economy, Damon has emphasized the importance of investing in the investment management system. If to start our project, here you can see our world and its atmosphere in blue color. Sun at the top and moon on the side. <clears throat> we will go into our world and see what's inside, what our world should consider to reduce climate change, and what changes we can do to provide evidences to help the changing. To start our adventure, please let's first teleport or dive into our world. To dive into our world, Please click on the black hole. Please, everyone, click on the teleporter.
So I assume everyone is here. And also you can click on pumpkin patch table to have an note card. As you can see, it's over here for your note card. So isn't it beautiful to see our world like this in green, raining and all natural? We can see here a house, parking area, dim, dim lights, sheep, flowers, trees, butterflies. What a freedom, right? Oh, and by the way, our world is spinning for the first time. You see the world spinning with our eyes, right? Apart from the laws of physics. As you can see here. Here, we can see our presentation area if you are interested to, re to read and take a look. Continue your adventure. Let's go to upper floor to our islands. Please uh, follow me, everyone. I am Goblins. Please take the stairs and go to the upper. And be careful while walking because you can just go down, fall down. Here we can see our present. <clears throat> oh, sorry. Here the team members' islands are separated, and each of them will introduce their islands as reflecting the changes that we can in favor for nature mother. Now it's Bianca's turn to speak. <clears throat> um, hi, I'm Bianca, and I will discuss the implementation of rainwater planters into our homes to help benefit the sustainability of our earth. Um, so, Ireland faces many environmental changes, including poor water quality in our rivers, streams, lakes, and beaches, to loss of biodiversity, habitat, and ecological, uh, ecology as a result of urban development, and lastly, climate change. We all need to take steps to improve our environment so that we can so that we and our communities can support and enhance nature and live healthier lives. We need good water quality for diverse and rich habitats. Um, and you can see in the slides, you can read off them because I'm basically using them as a guide. Uh, good water quality is also essential for one, enrich biodiversity, two, increase climate and flood resilience, and three, improve public amenity features such as park lakes. Um, Rainwater planters sh slow the ra uh, flow of rainfall from the roof to the drainage system. The soils and vegetation in the planter can remove poly pollutants by filtering out the water. Other otherwise, uh, these pollutants might end up in your local stream, lake, or beach. Um, typically, a water soaks into the soil of the planter. During heavy rainfall, excess water will pond into the uh, planter, which can overflow into one of two locations. One, an existing gully, or two, onwards to another rainwater structure like a garden pond. Um, one of the reason, few reasons why they help is because, um, one, they improve the urban flooding in our uh, environment. So rainwater planters help improve urban flooding by capturing and storing rainwater, reducing the amount of runoff that overwhelms the drainage systems. These planters act as natural reservoirs, absorbing and slowly releasing water, allowing it to be naturally filtered and recharged into the ground. This mitigates um, uh, flooding and helps manage stormwater into urban areas. Um, yeah. Two, they can help biodiversity. Um, rainwater planters improve biodiversity by providing a habitat for a diverse range of plant species. These plants uh, attract insects, birds, and other animals, creating a thriving 
ecosystem. Additionally, greenwater planters reduce the need for chemical fertilizers and pesticides, promoting a healthier environment and supporting a wider array of species and three they can improve color vegetation rainwater planters help to improve color vegetation by providing plants with a consistent supply of water this helps to prevent wilting and stress which can cause leaves to lose their color additionally rainwater is often free of the chemicals found in municipal water supplies which can help plants grow more vibrantly and maintain their natural colors and some of the materials that might be needed are um timber stainless steel wood screws timber battens timber battens again to a uh, liner Gravel, topsoil, sand, downpipe, rainwater diverter kit, coring, drill bits, staining for the wood, a 90 degree pipe, a plastic pipe, a hose pipe, and a hose, and a hose connector. Otherwise, you can um, purchase some online, um, but it'd be much more sustainable to build your own. <clears throat> and when making one, uh, creating a rainwater planter is simple and an effective way to conserve water and nurture plants. Start by obtaining a large container with drainage holes. Place it in a desired location and connect a rainwater collection system such as a gutter or downspout. When it rains, the container will collect water, which then can be used to water your plants, promoting sustainability and reducing water um, usage. So behind you at the house is an example of a rainwater planter, which I uh, created as well. Um, so yeah, uh, sorry, Kira will now explain the next topic. So if you just follow this bridge here. Give me a few seconds until everyone gets over. Okay, so thank you, Bianca. Um, so I'm going to talk about bees and beekeeping and how crucial it is to bio biodiversity. The UN Sustainable Goal 15 focus to prote focus on protecting and restoring and promoting sustainable use of terrestrial ecosystems, sustainably manage forests, combat desertification, and halt and reserve land degradation and halt biodiversity loss. So despite its small stature, bee species plays, on plays an oversized role in protecting biodiversity. Biodiversity refers to a variety of life in different ecosystems, meaning the array of plants and animals that inhabit a given region. So why bees are crucial on the earth? Bees are an important pollinator. Over 90% of wild flowering plants need animal pollinators like bees. But without bees and other pollinators, these plants will decline. This will impact an entire ecosystem. Put simply, we cannot live without bees. The United States Department of Agriculture estimates that pollinators like bees and butterflies help pollinate approximately 75% of the world's flowering plants. This, they pollinate roughly 35% of the world's food crops, including fruit and vegetables. So talking about and how, to, how to save bees, one of the largest threats to bees is a lack of safe habitat where they can build homes and find a variety of nutrition's, nutritious food so sources. By planting a bee garden, you can create a safe haven for bees. Honeybees like single flowering plants and vegetables, and bees like daisy-shaped flowers such as asters and sunflowers, along with tall plants. Bees need a lot of pollen and trees for a good source of food. And lastly, supporting local beekeepers. Local honey will be prepared by local beekeepers. This keeps food miles down the line and helps beekeepers to cover the cost of beekeeping. Buying, buying local honey and possible donations will also help the beekeepers. 
Thank you for listening. Now I'm going to pass on to Debbie. Hi, everyone. Um, so I think um, I'm supposed to come after Berkai, but I'm not sure where he is. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Debbie. I can hear you, but I can't. I'm just not sure if I can find like everyone because my island is after Barakai's. Yeah, it's Barakai's. It's Barakai's turn right now. Oh yeah. Okay. Sorry. Um, okay. Let's just follow. Let's just follow Barakai, and then I'll go after him. Hi, I am Barakai. Today I want to education. Over the past several decades, efforts have been made at the global, national, state, and local levels to increase attention paid to environmental sustainability, most natively called Seven of the United Nations Millennium Development Goals is to ensure environmental sustainability. In Marco, in order to achieve this goal, Goals. We must first develop an environmental literature public. To this end, many professional groups have provided guidance for te teachers to incorporate environmental sustainability education into the curriculum in primary and secondary schools. However, with its inclusion in the curriculum in primary and middle grades, it creates an awareness and basis for future students. The national conclusion for the social studies position statement on elementary social studies education shares a similar sentiment. Social studies content allows young learners to explain relationships with other people to institutions and to their environments and equip, ta equip them with knowledge and understanding of the past. It provides them with skills for productive problem solving and decision making as well as for assessing issues and making thoughtful value judgments. Thank you for listening. And Debbie, your turn. I was having issues setting up the text to speech um, feature. Hello? We can hear you. Okay, perfect. So if you want to follow me to my house, So I did my project on a solar battery house. So what I want to talk about is that saving energy is one of the most important factors in order to stop global warming and climate change. The best way to do so is by using an environment friendly energy sources and batteries. Um, electricity is one of the main reasons of climate change and wasting electricity largely contributes to global warming. For my project, I have built a house that is fully a solar battery operated, um, which only uses the energy of the sun. Each part of the house that requires energy, or sorry, electricity only uses it when it's needed, and each switch automatically turns off when it's not being used. The solar battery house is a new way of living nature friendly. It's modern, it's beautiful, and the house is like a smartphone. It makes it easier and more comfortable to save energy. The solar battery that I used is made out of as, uh, lead acid, lithium, ion, or salt water. Salt water is the most nature friendly um, resource or material that can be used. Okay, I can see a lot of people have entered the house. <laughs> 
So if you look up over the roof, I have built a little solar battery that provides electricity for the entire building. It is made out of gray bricks, if you can see it now, like gray tiles. So I used for this, for what I used for this is lithium, so, um, but it's not the most energy friendly, uh, sorry, environment friendly material. The best one to use is salt water. So what I wanted to say is that it's very, very important to try and use natural resources, water and solar and air based energy sources. Finally, environmental cleanliness is very important for uh, both human health and the health of other living things. Because environment is everyone's shelter, when environment is not kept clean, uh, everyone becomes filthy. When the environment is not clean, the increase in epidemic diseases increases and all living things suffer from it. Soil air and water are not polluted when the environment is kept clean. When these are not polluted, we create a clean world and a clean, uh, pleasant environment is left for future generations. When this happens, nature does not take revenge on us and begins to offer us its beauties. Now, um, we are in goblins. So thank you for your time and attention. You can now follow me and exit the world by flying into space. Just jump to the ground. Well done and thank you to the... Well, I, okay, if everybody is sitting comfortably again, um, I want to thank the students for their varied presentations and the design and building of their team spaces. <clears throat> I'm certainly very impressed with the quality of thought that you've put into the project and the high level of skill you have demonstrated after only such a short time in this particular metaverse. Very well done to all indeed. Don't forget, students, that you have a week <coughs> to write a critical review of your role in the project which will be a very important part of the assessment process. Excuse me. <clears throat> Secondly, I would like to thank my teaching colleagues, particularly Liz, Tuya, Fran and Katzai, who have worked closely with the teams. And Ginger, Gigi, Marino, Dahlia and Slayton, who have provided peer support Cite our Madonna, who works ceaselessly in the background, recording and monitoring proceedings. And of course, Magua, who is inspirational. And on that note, I would like to hand over to Magua to say a few words and then introduce Wisdom Seeker and Tuya to make some brief remarks. Magua. Um. This term was a very tough one for us, especially the ones uh, who are participating from Turkey, uh, because of the devastating event, uh, as you all know. So uh, I would like to congratulate all the teams for their performance today. And uh, we know that it will be very hard, and we know that uh, it was very tough procedure for most of our students and they really managed to uh, succeed in this bad times. So I really appreciate their effort and their hard work for the last term. And uh, we also get a lot of support in this uh, process 
during the last term, uh, especially the whole brain health team, uh, my colleague John, Sairam, uh, my uh, staff from Cha University, everyone worked hard on the background for this happened and also the audience and the guest speakers who are some of them are here today with us as an audience uh, they all really supported us uh, so much uh, and also sent their uh, best wishes for us during the bad times so we also appreciate them a lot for the effort and uh, support for the last term so um, I would like to invite uh, Wisdom uh, to the stage and also thank her in person as well uh, again and uh, I hope you all learned a lot during this process as well it was a crisis management as well as the uh, learning skills in metaverse this term so I congratulate you uh, sincerely thank you See, can you hear me okay? Okay. Okay. So, once again, we congratulate you students for creating these imaginative interactive exhibits that represent your team's best thoughts about that theme, no one is too small to make a difference. The diversity of your approaches has made this a very rich experience for all of us. Whole Brain Health has supported you throughout this project with lessons and hands-on help as you have built your examples. We have talked with you in WhatsApp and Instagram as you worked your ideas out with each other and brought them to life in a virtual world. And that's been very, very wonderful to be able to do. I want to thank our team, Tuya, Katzai, and Fran, for the time they've spent over the term interacting with you, sending you prompts to help you move forward nagging you, and helping you learn how to build in Second Life. I also want to thank Marino, who has been fantastic. She has been uh, talking to every team and helping every team uh, for an amazing amount of time for her work. And Sidearm, I've seen you here also helping students at various times. This is truly a team effort between you and between you and us. We are very, very proud of you. Thank you. <laughs>